Welcome to Beat Diabetes, where we discuss ways and means to defeat that monster that's been attacking your health and your life. On today's program, we'll hear about a woman who is 86 years old and has been diabetic for 20 years, but just recently she found the way to beat it, and now her numbers are in the normal range. And we'll also see why we have to be very careful about cauliflower pizza crust. Well, we'll get to our story of the 86-year-old woman who has found a way to beat diabetes, but first I wanted to share something that happened to me just this morning. I was in Walmart and I had to check out the cauliflower pizza crust. I've been hearing about them and I, I know how to make them and I know how to make a low carb version of them, but they're starting to sell them in the frozen section. Pizza crust, supposedly made with cauliflower. And for the average person who's trying to keep their blood glucose low, that sounds great. I mean, what could be better than something made of cauliflower? We all know cauliflower is a, is a, a vegetable that is no problemo for diabetics, very low in carbs. So sounds ideal, but there is a problem. The first one I want to talk about is this one uh, called cauliflower or cauliflower. Cauliflower, cauliflower, <laughs> and uh, it it uh, they sell two crusts in one package. They're not large crusts. Again, sounds great, but when you look at the nutrition facts, you notice a couple things. First thing is the they list these facts for one third of a crust, and this pizza crust is not that large. So one third is a fairly small piece of pizza. And you look at the carbs and it's 28 grams of total carbs and only one gram of fiber. So you think to yourself, what in the world is going on? This, this is too many carbs for a cauliflower pizza crust. How can they have that many carbs in something that has cauliflower in it? And the answer is, if you look at the ingredients, sure enough, they're not lying. It is made with cauliflower and it's listed as the number one ingredient. But coming a close second, I would imagine, would be the brown rice flour. And then after that, rice flour and after that, cornstarch. So you look at these three ingredients, you say, aha, that is why when you look at the total carbs, you're getting 28 grams, 27 net grams of carbs, which isn't all that much less than a candy bar. So, and by the time you put some toppings on there and some tomato sauce and different things, you're probably up to candy bar level. And that's not even for a large piece of pizza. That's a, a fairly modest one. Uh, not good. So I took another look, same Walmart. I looked at the Walmart generic version of it, the great value brand, which is Walmart's generic version. Cheese, cauliflower, crust pizza. Once again, sounds good. Most diabetics understand that cauliflower is not a problem for, for blood sugar. Cheese is not a problem for blood sugar. And yet, when you look at the total carbs, you're looking at 24 for, once again, one-third of a pizza, which is a fairly small piece. And uh, this one does have three grams of fiber, so it would bring it down to 21 net grams. So that's still way too high. You say, how can that be? You look at the ingredients and after the cauliflower, and then they've got some low moisture whole milk, the number three ingredient is potato flour, then chickpea flour, and then brown rice flour. So, and I've noticed this before once at Whole uh, Foods, uh, Whole Food Store. I saw a cauliflower pizza crust and my eyes just lit up the first time I checked them out and I thought, this is great. Uh, because the truth is, I just don't like spending a lot of time in the kitchen if I can help it. I don't like making cauliflower pizza crust. I know I can. And there are some great recipes on YouTube. Dr. Berg has a great uh, cauliflower crust, uh, pizza crust that works. But these ones you buy in the store are mostly not good at all. They throw in a lot of junk. My question for these producers is why? Why would you do that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why they would do it. I guess it makes the, the crust a little bit more the right texture. Or maybe it tastes a little more like a normal pizza crust. 
I'll tell you the truth. I would much rather go for just the low-carb tortilla and use that as a pizza crust rather than these. And, uh, of course, you have to find out if Mike approves because I've had some people write in and say, I've tried the low-carb tortillas. They don't work for me. But I have found some brands that work for me and uh, much superior to these cauliflower crusts that you find like these. Now, there may be some good ones around. I don't know. But these two I checked have way too many carbs. So the word is beware the cauliflower pizza crust that you find in the frozen section at your supermarket. There, Like I said, there may be some good ones. I don't know. But uh, there's a lot of stinkers out there. All right. Let's get to the 86-year-old lady who found a way to beat diabetes. Okay. Now, I love this one. This one is from an 86-year-old woman. Wow, 86. Sharp lady. She, there's a lot of people in their 30s that aren't as, nearly so smart as she. She says, I'm 86. I've been type 2 for 20 years. And it's get, it has been harder and harder to control my A1C. Well, normally that's the case unless you make the dietary changes. So 20 years, A1, uh, 20 years diabetic. And uh, now in her mid 80s, and it's just getting, it has been getting tougher and tougher. She says the solutions that were offered by the doctors was just increase the meds. Sad, but that is so often true. Just increase those meds. A little more metformin, a little more of this, a little more of that. Okay, well, now we're going to put some insulin on top of all the other meds, and just on and on it goes. She says, I discovered low carb high, good fat. I lost about 12 pounds down to 135. So for an 86-year-old woman, 135 pounds is pretty good, really good. She says, but the biggest news is I went from an A1C of 8 to 5.4 in six months. And I learned about fasting during the same time. Most 86-year-olds or 80-year-olds, they have enjoyed eating for so long, you couldn't get them to fast for love or money. But she learned about fast. This lady, I, I would love to meet her. She obviously has a really inquisitive, sharp mind. Uh, she says, I learned about fasting. I fast from 24 to 72 hours periodically. I mean, this is a very serious senior citizen. Fasting seems, she says, to reset my blood sugar when it creeps up. And I love this. She says, I'm saving over $1,000 a month on meds alone. And I imagine some of that would be insulin. Saving a thousand, over $1,000 a month because she went the natural way instead of just doing what the, some doctors say, not all of them, thank God, but some We'll just tell you, just take more of this and more of that. Well, it's time for a little more of this, time for a little more of that. And instead, she she decided to change it by diet and by doing some intermittent fasting, time-restricted eating, and bam, sounds like she's off all meds. She doesn't exactly say that, but she does say, I'm saving over $1,000 a month on meds. Wow, wow, wow. Even though she says the individual components of a low-carb diet may be more expensive, the overall food costs have gone down. Well, <laughs> yeah, when you figure in the cost of all those meds and the cost of, of your health, that you're, you're prolonging good health, it's just wonderful. And it is. It's a cheap price. Even if I have to pay a little more initially at the grocery store every month, Compared to what I would be doing, going to more doctor visits, having more procedures, and taking more meds, it is so worth it. This is so thrilling. Let me say something to you. Let me just point my finger right at the camera, right at you, and say, if that 86-year-old woman can turn things around at her age, do you think you could? You who are in your 30s or 40s or 50s or whatever? Of course you could. If she can do it, you can do it. From 8 to 5.4 in six months. And she also fasts. Well, in some ways, diabetes is like a mean dog that has come to live in your house. You don't even know where he came from. He just showed up in your house one day 
and he growls at you when you wake up in the morning. Sometimes he nips at your legs and bites you. And he's all the time making it quite clear that he he hates you. That dog is living in your house. And even though you feed him, he hates you. And so you're explaining a neighbor lady comes over. and You're explaining to her about this terrible dog. She looks and sees this dog and he's growling at the lady, growling at her. She's saying, what, what is, where did this dog come from? What is this? Why do you have this dog in your house? And you say, I don't know where he came from. He is such a miserable dog. I hate him. Uh, He's nothing but trouble for me. But all the while you're talking about how much you hate this dog, you're preparing hamburger on the stove because you're going to give him hamburger in his doggy bowl and feed him. So you're talking about how terrible he is, how much you dislike him, how much you hate him how much trouble he is, how he growls at you, he bites you. And all the while you're fixing him a nice meal and finally you take the hamburger off the stove, put it in his little doggy bowl and hand it to him and he growls at you and then starts eating his meal. And your neighbor lady says, well, can I ask you a question? Sure, what do you want to ask? Why do you keep feeding him if you hate him so much? Maybe if you stopped feeding him, he'd go away. (laughs) Well, I hardly need to draw the application, do I? Why do you feed your diabetes? What do you feed diabetes? Carbs, carbs, more carbs, a carb, carb here and a carb, carb there, here, a carb, there, a carb, everywhere, a carb, carb, a pie, a cake, a baked potato, big mounds of rice, huge chunks of bread. You just feed your diabetes every day, feed your diabetes. It's growling, it's biting, it's hurting you. You hate it. You want to get rid of it, but you feed it every single blessed day. Why don't you stop feeding your diabetes? And after a while, it'll get so scrawny and so unhappy, it'll leave your house. Well, I I try to say it in as many ways as I can. Diabetes can be beaten, but you have to be at least a little bit smart. And here's an 86-year-old woman who has seen tremendous victory. In her old age, she had lived with it for 20 years and finally stopped feeding her diabetes, and it got scrawny and went away. I want you to know that I do have another YouTube channel. It's called by my name, Dennis Pollock, and on this channel, I teach the Bible. I do short little six- and seven-minute devotionals normally on all kinds of Bible topics. If you're having a rough week and need some encouragement, or you just want to know what does the Bible actually say, you need to check out my Dennis Pollock Bible channel. There'll be a link in the description below.